Hi all, I'm picking up from where we left off in OSPF part one. So we left off where I configured one network statement for router one. And that network statement was this one for this 172.16.1.16 network. Let's move forward and add another network statement now, but let's do it for this 192, say 10.0 slash 30 network. So one of the first things to look at is Let's pop in, first of all, the subnet mask that usually would be used here. It's 255, 255, and I know you're all shouting at me at the moment, it's 252, okay? So if we use the same logic as we had in our, in our previous um, part one, we know that to, to work out the wildcard mask, it's, it's a matter of taking 255, 255, 255, 255, and subtracting the value of that wildcard mask. So in this case, it's going to be 255, 255, 255, 255.252, which gives us an answer of 0 .0 0.0.0.3. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to actually add in this new network statement into router one. So I'm going to say enable comt router ospf one. And then I'm going to say network, and I'm going to pop in the network, 192.168.10.0. And then our wildcard mask of 0.0.0.3, followed by area 0. Once I've done that, that's our next network command. We can then add another network command. So I'm going to go network. And I know that this network is now needed to be added. So once again, I can see this as a slash 30, which is the same subnet mask. So it's going to be a very similar statement. It's going to be 192.168.10.4 in this case, because this is the network. It's the next available network. And I'm going to say 0.0.0.3 .0 again, area 0. Now, once we've done that, guys, we've now got three network statements on our router. Why have we got three? Because we've got three separate networks, okay? Um, so once we've configured this, at this point, if I go back to, for example, show um, IP OSPF neighbors, okay? Currently, oh, it's saying it doesn't like that command for some reason. Maybe it's the S at the end. Okay, it's basically saying there, so it's show IP OSPF neighbor. It's saying, hey, I've got no neighbors. I haven't been able to establish any relationships with any neighbors beside me. So again, it, it's trying to send out at the moment because I've enabled it on these interfaces here, OSPF, on these three interfaces at this stage. It's sending out now hello messages out each of these interface, out three of these interfaces, and it's, and it's essentially waiting to see if any people say hello back. So at this point, no one's saying hello back because essentially they haven't got OSPF configured. So on this router, the first thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm gonna have a look at, um, I'm gonna go into, well, let's do a show IP interface brief first. Now from here, I can see that there is no loopbacks basically assigned. So we need to look and see which is going to be the highest interface that's in an up statement, up state, and that's this interface here. So if I do a, if I ran show IP protocols, there shouldn't be any routing protocol on the router at the moment. But if I now go comt router OSPF, and then a process ID of one, again, this doesn't have to match other routers, but I like to keep things simple and keep it the same. And now what I can do is, now that I've, I've turned on essentially OSPF, I could, if I like, have a look at the routing process. So I know that OSPF has been turned on and it should have given the router, in this case, router three, a router ID of the highest up, up interface, which is gonna be 192.168.10.10. To prove this, I could do, do show IP protocols. And I can now see that the router ID is that. So if I wanted to change that, I could obviously, but for now, we're fine with that router ID. So now let's think about, it. let's do a show IP interface brief. And I like to have this command up. I think this is a very useful command to know as you're configuring routers. 
the, the, the show IP interface brief because again it gives us a, a little insight into the interfaces on this router and what I know is that I can see in this particular network if I just move this around I can see that this is a, a 1.32 slash 29 so I can take that into consideration I know that this interface here is a slash 30 and this is a slash 30. Now again if I want to you know, if this was on a production network and I wanted proof and I just didn't want to go by documentation, what I could do is I could do a do show run. Okay, and I'm using this do command, remember, because I'm not in the usual privilege mode. I'm running it outside of privilege mode. But if I go press the space bar, I can see the full um, IP address with its mask there. So again, I can see that this is indeed a slash 29. If I press spacebar, it's gonna jump down and it's gonna show me my two serial interfaces again with a slash 30 and a slash 30. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit the up arrow a couple of times and I'm gonna go show IP interface brief. We're still in this OSPF configuration mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump straight in I'm going to start configuring my network commands. So let's start off with the 172.16.1. And now I can go back and I can check. This is going to be, if you like, the 1.32 network. Okay, so 32. And again, what's the wildcard mask? So again, if you're unsure of this, you can pop it into the formula. So again, what's the formula? Well, I know that the subnet mask for this network would be 255.255.255.248 we could have got that from the show run and if I take that away from 255.255.255.255 what am I going to get? I'm essentially going to get let's pop in our symbol here our answer to that is going to be 0 .0 0.0.0.7 okay so I can go back to my router here and I can pop in my first network command with a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.7 .0 and say area zero. I'm now going to add in my next network statement. So again, I just hit the up arrow and what this I know is going to be, it's gonna be the 192 with a slash 30 mask. So again, if it's got a slash 30, it's gonna be a dot three wildcard mask. And I'm gonna obviously need to change this IP address. So 192, dot 10.4. Now what's gonna be very interesting here, guys, for the first time, what we should see is a neighbor relationship forming when I press enter here. Why is this gonna happen? Because what will happen is we're gonna enable this interface to say, hey, start talking OSPF and start advertising hello messages out this interface. What's gonna happen? This guy is gonna send the hello over to him and because the hellos match, so in other words, it has the same subnet mask, they're on the same network, and other settings like the hello timers and various other default settings match, they should form a neighbor relationship. So again, you might remember when I when I said show IP OSPF neighbor on this router one here a few moments ago, there was nothing to be seen. And again, if I was to run the command here on router three, again, no relationship is formed. So let's do this. I'll wait for a second. And hopefully we should start to see. And there we go, guys. Bingo, our first neighbor relationship has formed. And you can see there it's formed with 20.20.20.20. .20 Who is that? Well, that was the router ID that I just gave from the top of my mind. I gave that to R1. So what has that actually done? Now, just before I do anything else, I just want to finish off the last network statement there. So again, I'm going to hit the up arrow, and I'm just going to add in the last if you like, network statement for this router three, and that's 10.8. So I'm gonna press enter on that. No network, uh, no relationship is gonna come up there. The reason being is I haven't configured R2 as of yet. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop back into privilege mode, and I'm gonna run that show IP OSPF neighbor command again. Once I do that and press enter, I've got some information, guys. I can see the router ID of router one. I can see the full state of Basically, this um, when we do a neighbor, when we start sending over these hello messages, it starts going through a number of different states. At the end process of this is if all of the statements match, like subnet mask and the same network and hello timers, they, they go through various different states, finishing in full, which basically means that they've sent across information about each other now at this stage. And you might say, well, 
what, what about each other? Well, for example now, it's also, or three will have told, essentially R1, about this network here, for example, because again, from R1's perspective, it knows about this network, it knows about this network, but it wouldn't know about this network. How can I prove that? Well, I could go back to R1, and essentially you can see the message there, the OSPF adjacency process. And remember, just before here, and I'm pointing at the screen, and I know you guys can't see this, but if I hit the up arrow, and I hit the show IP OSPF neighbor, what should I see? I should see the router ID of router three now. And that's what I see. And if I just, I like to always move this across so I have one line of output, okay? So what I'm seeing here, guys, is I'm seeing, here's the neighbor ID, which is router three in our case. I can see the full state of the link state database. So this is the information that's come across. I can see the address, okay, of essentially the interface. So if you like 10.6 is this interface here and serial 001. So essentially this is the interface that I learned this information from. So what can I see now, guys? What I can see is to prove that I now have information, what I can do is I can do a show IP route to see my routing table. So here now, guys, I have the usual connected information, but you'll also see in this now I've got O-learned routes. What are these O-learned routes? They're OSPF connected routes. And I can see here, guys, that I've learned about the network 172.16.1.32 slash 29. So what network is this? The network here is this guy here. So Dublin has now learned through R3 about this network here. Okay. I can also see folks that it's learned about the OSPF network 10 192.168.10.8. Where is this network? Well, you can see guys from this perspective, Dublin, it knows about obviously connected, this network, it knows about this network, and it knows about this network. It's learned about this network through OR3, but it's also learned about this network through OR3. Okay, so this is obviously fascinating stuff. I know you're enjoying this, guys. I can I can tell by your faces and um, your big smiles, that is. So let's have a look now at OR2. What does it know about? Well, remember, we haven't configured any OSPF on this it hasn't had any neighbor relationships so again it will not know about any of these distant networks so this network here or this network here okay all it will know about is this network directly attached to Galway and it will know about this network here and this network here so we can prove this by doing a show IP route and we can see here guys it just knows about these three connected networks what are these three connected networks again this directly connected network to fast ethernet, zero slash two, which is the 10 network. And it knows about the 192.10.0 network, which connects up to our Dublin router. And it knows about the 10.8, which is connected up to R3. But notice it does not know anything about OSPF or distant networks. And remember, this is one of the functions of a link state routing protocol is to get distant networks into the routing table so it knows how to forward traffic. Because guess what guys, if I try and send a message now from OR2 down to OR to PC3, will this work? Well the answer to that is no it won't, it will fail. Why will it fail? Well if I go to simulation mode guys and just run that test again, it will get as far as its local router, i.e. router 2, but then router 2 will say sorry, I can't help you there. So essentially, once it gets to router 2, we'll say, sorry, I see you're trying to go to this network down here, but I don't have a route for that. So in that case, I'm going to drop the packet. And here comes the error response. Okay, that will come back to PC2. You might then say, guys, will, for example, this PC, PC1, be able to talk to PC3? Well, as we know, R1 now has a route to the 172.16.1.32 network. And OR3 has a route back to the 172.16.1.16 network. So in this case, this should actually work, shouldn't it? So if I try that, okay, going from PC1 to PC3, the first message may fail. Why will that be? Because we need to ARP a number of times. Okay, so here's the ARP. We might find on the other side of the link, we also need to ARP, and that will mean that the packet doesn't go through in time. So 
for example, if I was on the command line, the first one, the first uh, ICMP may fail. If I keep pressing forward here though, guys, I should get another message in a moment coming from PC1. Let's just fast forward a little bit. Might take a little bit of time. Um, still don't have an ICMP by the looks of things. Let's keep going for another couple of seconds. Hopefully this guy will, oh, no, sorry, this is DTP. So we're still firing off lots of different other, there's OSPF packets, STP, spanning tree protocol. I'm still waiting for my next ICMP message. Still no sign of it yet, guys. Hold on. Let's see if I can keep fast forwarding. Come on. Where is this ICMP? Are we going to see it? Okay, it doesn't look like it's coming anytime soon. Let's, uh, well, let's go back to our, let's go even into our command prompt for a moment. Let's ping, for example, let's force this issue, guys, from our simulation tool. Let's put in 172.16.1. Let's have a look. Let's see what this IP address is. Dot 34. Okay, so let's let's force this issue so we can get this ICMP speaking. Here it comes. Here's the next ICMP. So hopefully this goes across. The router has an entry for it, sends it across, goes over, and this should come back across. And there we have it, guys. We now can see that this PC is now receiving. We've got a successful reply. Okay, so guys, at this stage, we've got R1 and R3 communicating, which is fantastic. But we're yet to configure up basically R2's information from an OSPS perspective. I'm going to pause there, guys, and I'm going to continue this in the next part. And we're also going to take a look at if, for example, I wanted to change the routing perspective or how the messages will get routed across the network links. We're going to look into that. So hopefully you'll tune back into that part three. And I look forward to seeing you soon.